Oh, never mind. We're back here on the set of the Mountain Morning Show with Lindsay Hargit of LK Cooking. Lindsay, how are you doing? It's been a little while. It's been since great. Been I in. know. Glad we're back here. How's your summer been so far? Crazy but fun. Crazy got but vacation fun. Vacation in and some work. So there you go. Well, at nice. least you got your vacation yes. in. That's good. I'm That's good necessary for the summer. For the summer. Mm -hmm. Well, you're here to teach us all about some summer barbecue sides. We yes. all know how to cook up summer barbecue main dishes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everyone knows the brats, the ribs, yeah, the all burgers, of that stuff, all the, the good burgers. Stuff. But when it comes to the sides, I think people can kind of fail sometimes. Maybe just the bag of chips, that's not yes, good enough, Yes, the bag right? of chips is kind of the, kind of the go-to, like, oh, I'll bring the chips, but then everybody's got chips and you're eating chips and burgers. <laughs> yeah. and that's not really well-rounded, so. You have 15 varieties of chips yes, and exactly. one burger, so that's totally good there. So you're gonna yes. teach us now about some really cool creative mm -hmm. sides to go with these barbecue dishes. Let's learn about them right now. Yes, okay, so this one that I'm gonna show you first is my guacamole potato salad. Okay, and I kind of good. wrestled with, like, giving this recipe out because it is my all-time favorite. And usually people ask me like, uh, it's a secret. You're like, that's but, my secret. <laughs> but I'm gonna let you know, it is my very favorite thing. So usually potato salad is like covered in mayo, it's really kind of rich, and you know, it sits out for the longest yes. time in that mayo, and so you're kind of like, mm, I'm not sure about that. So, like I said, this is my guacamole potato salad. Did you, did you come up with this recipe on your so own? So I, really I found kind of a starter for this, but really kept like two ingredients, like one step and then the avocado, okay. and switched it all up. Okay. So, turned it into a more southwestern thing. So, what you start with, so like I said, usually you have um, mayo for the, for the dressing, but this one is gonna use avocados. And I have one really ripe avocado, this one, this and then one, right one that's really soft, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But um, so we're gonna use the avocado to coat the potatoes. In the I would say that makes sense because avoc one avocado oil is it's a lot healthier for you mm -hmm. than a, a mayo alternative, I guess you could say. But yes. it's gonna give it a really cool flavor as well. I'm really interested to see mm -hmm. how this turns out. It makes out. it so you, really soft. So how many avocados do you need for this? So I've just got two. Okay. And you want them really soft. This one was really deceiving that soft I got. Soft as possible. So, <laughs> um, so we're just gonna work with that. But as avocados can be most of the time. Yes. Which is it's so tricky. They're either way hard or way, way, way too soft. So you do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna let you start mashing this. Okay, See that masher yeah, right there? Get the masher, so you start get that. mashing all this up. Mm -hmm. So we've got that, and we're gonna turn that into our, our base. That's what's gonna coat everything. Okay. So good luck with those hard ones. Oh, it's actually not bad but, at all. They're perfect. Oh, so we've got that, and then we're gonna add some more guacamole ingredients in here. Okay. So we've got um, all of your classic flavors. Um, we've got your paprika and um, cumin and onion powder, and we've got some garlic as well. We're going to add some... Some fresh garlic, too. That's yes, important. I know garlic definitely. powder or garlic salt can be used as a substitute mm -hmm. in guac all the time, but, but fresh garlic. gotta go with the fresh garlic. It tastes so you. much better. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get some lime to kind of keep your avocado from browning. Okay. And, you know, just give it that good flavor. So, um, we've got some cilantro as well, and so... Two of the big things in this recipe, so I'm getting lime juice everywhere. Oh, you're fine. Two of the big things are using avocado instead of mayo, and then typically you um, you boil your potatoes, but I roast mine. You roast them. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the difference there? What, so what's the change? It gives it a little bit more of like a, a texture instead of just the soft potatoes. Okay. It's got a little bit of give to it. Okay. And then also, so we've got bacon in here as well that we're gonna add. And so what I do is I bake my bacon. If you aren't baking your bacon 400 for like 15, 20 minutes, it will change your it's life. It's the easiest way, it I agree. It is the easiest when way. When I learned that trick, one, it comes out, I don't know about you, but I, I'm kind of more of like a crispy, crispy bacon. Crispy, exactly. I don't like the flimsy bacon, so mm -hmm. if you're a fan of crispy bacon, just do it in the oven, because literally, like mm -hmm. you said, you, you put it in, you walk away for 15 minutes, it's mm -hmm. ready to go. And it's perfect. And when I found that out, I was like, what have like, I been doing I my been entire doing? life? Exactly. Burning bacon in the pan. Yes, <laughs> making your house smell. So, you're gonna bake your bacon on a baking sheet, and then toss your chopped potatoes in the bacon fat. Okay. It also oh, will change your life. Oh, in the bacon fat. Wow, mm -hmm. that does sound really it good as well. also will change your life so, and so And do you do that before, ba before you roast the potatoes, or you do that after they've all been roasted, you kind of toss them in there? No, so I bake them on the same pan. Bake the bacon, take the bacon off, wow. put the potatoes in there, toss them around. So, that, so yeah, good. Yeah, it makes it sound really it good. It really will just change everything. Plus, I'm sure so. the, bacon, uh, the bacon fat helps kind of crisp up the potatoes as mm -hmm. well, which it, is kind of Like I said, it gives flavor. it a little bit of that give. So what we're going to do now, yeah, surprise with the you avocado. Did a good job. Yeah. So <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to add, add in our potatoes, and okay. you can serve this warm or cold. I kind of like to bring it cold so that because it's going to come to room temperature. Yeah. You know anyways. What I mean? yep. 
So we're gonna mix those around, and then also we've got some cilantro. So like I said, we've got our guacamole flavors. Gotta have and the cilantro. You really could even add chopped tomatoes in this. I haven't done that before, but it would okay. be really good if you like your guacamole that way. It could be really tasty. So you're gonna do that, and then we're gonna get it all stirred around. I missed an avocado, so it won't be as creamy, but you know, you kind of get it all stirred together and then it tastes just it's nice and fresh and Yeah, this looks great. It's just it's one of my favorites. Total, like there's I said. a really good spin on on your traditional potato salad. Mm -hmm. So much better for you. Healthy fats, healthy things in there, but because everyone has their family potato salad recipe yes. and they're really proud of it. So just wait till you mm -hmm. show up to the party with this and you're like, yes, ha. It's always a winner. Like I said, people ha. ask me for it and I'm like, no, <laughs> no. But so if you're watching, you get this. Then I'm flinging potato everywhere. But it's, right. it's messy, but it's delicious. So that is a good one. And so you were saying everybody has potato salad. Everybody has pasta salad as well. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of change that one up a little bit, make it a little bit fresher as well. And so Got this pasta one is here. a caprese pesto pasta salad. And what we're gonna do with this, and we've got our pasta, I've got a cool one that I got from Harmon's, and we're gonna add our classic caprese ingredients. Now, sure. I'm gonna show you a trick to cutting your tomatoes, even though I didn't get my knife out. Okay. But, so what you're gonna do is, instead of cutting all these little tomatoes by hand, which is such a pain, you're gonna put them in a lid. Mine kind of have these little divots, but if it's just a flat lid, that's totally fine. Get two of the same lid, and you're gonna put the tomatoes in there and put it like this. Smart. Yes, and so do smart. the little and then cut you it go through in with a Okay, that makes And then sense. they're perfect. They're perfect. So then you halved. dump those in. Um, I've also got these little mozzarella balls. You might have seen these at like, I get them at Costco all the time. My husband's gonna be sad that I stole these. But <laughs> um, like, he's like, we just got these. <laughs> so you've got these little mozzarella balls. You can get them at the grocery store, you can get them at Costco, okay. or you can just chop up a fresh thing of mozzarella. Okay. So, so good. So we've got these Toss in there. all those in there as well, perfect. Mm -hmm. I've got some basil for my basil plant at home. I like to shred it, some people like it whole. Okay. So you can do that as well. And then add your tomatoes once you've chopped them. So uh, pretend these are chopped, right? Pretend they're chopped, we'll add them in there. We'll add these in here as well. <laughs> Just for some color. The nice thing about that trick too is it kind of helps with the consistency of the cut. Yes. Everything's going to be like the same. Sometimes you get kind of weird ones and it's. Oh, that's mine. They're all like lumpy yeah, and they're sideways all over and the place. yeah. What is this here? Pesto. So this is the pesto. Okay. I get this from Costco as well. Okay. It's amazing. Um, so you're going to add just a little bit of it. We'll stir it up in a little bit and see if we want more. But that instead of the mayo again is going to be your coating there, kind of your so dressing. So a good healthy alternative to that mayo as mm -hmm. well. But and you're then, not sacrificing flavor, which yes, is a big, big pesto deal. Pesto is so so flavorful. So another thing we're going to add, which will give it a little bit more of like a filling, you know, ness to yeah, you, yeah. Um, is some beans. You can do any kind of white beans. I've got garbanzo beans. You okay. can do cannellini beans. Great northern beans, whatever you want to do. You could even, yeah, do white beans. That'd be delicious. The gar garbanzo beans are going to be a good crunch uh -huh. in there, though. I like that a lot. Exactly. And again, they're kind of just good for you, too. So, so mix this around now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to switch around. All right, here. we'll switch so. sides. I'm and playing then, sous chef today. Mm -hmm. Do you want to hand me that avocado oil? You're a great sous chef. Absolutely. Here so, you go. another ingredient for a caprese salad is usually you have a little bit of oil and you have a little bit of balsamic. Yeah. So, we're going to add a little bit of that. And you chose avocado oil. Why avocado oil? Mm, it kind of gives it a healthier flavor, plus my avocado oil has a lid and my extra virgin olive oil does not. Does not, so, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, versatile. extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil, something yes. like that, that's going to give you kind of that same texture, but also the mm -hmm. same uh, health qualities, I guess you could say as well, rather exactly. than choosing something else. You could use coconut oil And this oil smells even. so good, I've got to tell mm -hmm. you. That pesto has a strong flavor. So I've got some garlic powder in here. I've got some pepper. I'm going to add some salt as well. And then it looks like you've got that nice and tossed up. So this is just going to give it that little extra kick with the balsamic. So we're going to stir that all together. Looks and great. then kind of drizzle and that drizzle over. All over. And you can see that there isn't a lot of, of olive oil, so you don't really have a lot of that fat in there. I mean, there is some in the pesto. And but that's definitely a lot less than I would have expected to put on there, but I think that's any more and it would have been too overpowering. It would be a little strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you just want a little hit of that balsamic. If you Perfect. like balsamic a lot more, you can hit it more, but... That's how I like awesome. it. Awesome. So. so you just got two really good recipes from mm -hmm. Lindsay right now. We're going to take a really quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll try both of these as well as get some desserts going as mm -hmm. well. We'll be right back right here on the Mountain Morning Show. Don't go anywhere. We're back here with Lindsay Hargit of LK Cooking. We just got done making this amazing caprese pesto pasta salad, mm -hmm. as well as a, a guacamole um, potato salad as well, which yes. is kind of a different change there. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to try those. But before we do that, Lindsay's got a really good dessert recipe so you can wrap up your summer barbecue uh, in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. What do we have here in front of us? It so looks amazing. This is a cinnamon roll kind of snack cake, and it is. I could say we have to look at favorite. it first before we before we uh, put icing all over this. 
it looks amazing, mm -hmm. so good. Yes, so instead of, my husband loves cinnamon rolls and he always wants them, I'm like, oh, that's kind of a lot of time. <laughs> and uh, You and figured out the quick way. Yes, exactly. So what this is is just like, it's cake form, but then we've got this cinnamon sugar mixture kind of swirled in there and it is so, so good. So when you pour, do you do this by pouring the batter and then kind of using something to kind yes, of stir exactly. that around? Okay, So you, you cool. put the batter in there, you swirl that around and you kind of swirl it to make it all pretty and it looks really rough at first, but then you bake it out and it's Looks gorgeous. Looks really great, yeah, seriously. So, but we're also going to top it with frosting. So, you know, you've got to show people first, be like, look how pretty, I'm a great chef, <laughs> and then I'm we a put great the baker. Frosting exactly. So, and then this is just my cream cheese frosting. And so we'll just put this on some of our bites here and it is, it is so good. Yeah, it because looks amazing. Like, Did you make an extra one for me? I'm like, don't worry, I got you. So. And this is, a, by the way, this is another one of Lindy's secrets that she doesn't like to mm -hmm. give out, but she's being nice enough to let you know about all of these great recipes yes. today. Lindsay, you post these recipes online as well. Where can people find yes. them? Yes, so they're going to be on my website tonight. It's at lkcooking.com. Um, I've got recipes from, from this time, from past segments and stuff. And I also have, um, I'm doing a kids cooking camp. I have a bunch of sessions this yes. summer. They're super fun. We've already started them. Your kids are going to learn a lot. Let's talk about that. What is the, the kids cooking camps all about? Is it just kind of basic cooking for kids or is it kids who already kind of know how to cook a little bit and want to learn a little bit more? So it's really just kind of a broad range. If they don't know, they're going to learn a lot. If they do know a little, they're still going to learn a ton. Um, I, in my class last week, we taught some knife skills. They learned how to you know, work with raw meat and, yeah. and bake and everything like that. And the best part, this really is the best part, is they will come home and you know, they've got that confidence and the I can do it sort of thing and they're going to come home and cook for you. Cook I've had a meal for you. so, so cool. many parents text me pictures of their kids cooking and being like, look, they made us breakfast or they made us dinner. It's a real thing. <laughs> they really, you know, they, they want to show you what they've got and what they can do and they're going to want to help you and they're going to be a little more capable than before where you're like, oh, just let me do it, it'll be faster, so. Well, the cool thing is you're teaching them really important skills, too, like knife yes. skills and stuff like that as well, which are mm -hmm. the safety side of cooking, which I know that's yes. probably the biggest stress for parents most of the time. It's not mm -hmm. the fact that their kids are in there cooking, mm -hmm. it's more so how safe are my kids too. in there. Exactly, yeah. and the lessons are a little, you know, we're really, really careful and super hands-on and yeah, I don't, I don't teach the simple stuff. I really want your kids to know, you know, the fundamentals and stuff like that so that they can come home and really know how to cook. Do that as well. Well, will you so, get the rest of that going? I'm yes. going to dish us up a little bit of these great sides that we prepared just a while ago. Here's mm -hmm. the pesto caprese pasta salad. I got to steal a little piece of mozzarella there. Sorry to Lindsay's yes, husband. So we, good. We're Don't worry, I saved mozzarella. you some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's that, as well as the guacamole potato, potato salad. salad here. Yeah. And I've got some cinnamon roll cake for you. Perfect. You can see it's just, you know, just like a slice of cake, but you can see that cinnamon kind of swirled in there. I'm gonna put this, but I won't let it touch your pasta oh, salad. Oh man, those garbanzo beans in there are really, really good. Mm -hmm. That's a great addition. It kind of adds a little bite and just super good. Wow, so the so. pasta salad's really delicious. I'm really interested to see what this uh, potato salad's gonna be like. The potato salad is my absolute favorite. I make it all wow, the time. Wow, that is really so. good. Very, very good. I think when you first hear a guacamole potato salad, you don't even know what to expect, but yeah, that is like, really where delicious. Yeah, are we going with this? But yeah, it is, it is totally my favorite. So, so Lindsay, you also offer adult cooking classes as well. Let's mm -hmm. talk quickly about that before we have to get out of this. So I do those, I do them on occasion. I really love the kids' classes, so I do them monthly. But the adults' classes, um, you can go to my website, send me an email, um, go to my Instagram or send me a message, and we can set up classes. So, you know, I've done birthday parties. We do, like, Food Network challenges, like Chopped and, you know, Cupcake really Wars cool. and stuff. They're super fun. So they have a bunch of weird ingredients, and, you know, everybody's, it's either couples or friends competing against each other. They're super, super fun. That sounds like so. a good way to spend a birthday party. I would never mm -hmm. thought of that. I think I have a new idea for my They're next birthday super now. super fun. Well, so. Lindsay, where can people follow you on Instagram? Uh, I know your website's lkcooking.com. Yes. Instagram um, is... My Instagram is just lkcooking. That's where, you know, I'm most current, and everything is up there. So... Perfect. To find all my details. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing these really good recipes with us. Again, these are <laughs> some of her secrets, so feel lucky that you got uh, yeah, to, to know these today. Park City exclusive. <laughs> Park City exclusives. Be sure and follow her on Instagram at LK Cooking. Check out her website, lkcooking.com. If you have kids that want to get in the kitchen and learn some great cooking skills, mm -hmm. she has some awesome I've got kids two cooking spots camps. Left, so hurry quick. Sign up fast for sure. We'll be right back uh, with more right here on the Mountain Morning Show. Don't go anywhere.